Hello, this is Frank with Christensen Transportation. We're starting a new series of talking points, and today I'm going to be discussing and going over communicating with your fleet manager and the importance that is to the job. First of all, communicating with your fleet manager makes you a professional here at Christensen, and it's a very important part of your job. We're going to start today with safety and the importance of communicating any issues with your fleet manager due to a ticket, an accident, or a DOT inspection. These need to be communicated as soon as possible. If there's an accident, you need to notify the proper authorities, then communicate with your fleet manager the seriousness of the accident. DOT and safe uh, DOT and tickets when you get a DOT inspection, whether you pass or fail, pick up the phone, you're a professional driver here at Christensen, and talk to your fleet manager. And they will in turn send you to safety. Same thing with a ticket. You can't hide a ticket. We'll know about it. Doesn't don't don't hide it. We get a ticket, pick up the phone, call your fleet manager, let them know what's going on. They will in turn send you to safety. Same thing with an accident. Get a hold of the proper authorities if you need medical or police or any of that. You call them first, then call your fleet manager. Don't call your driving buddy or your friend or another driver. You need to get a hold of your fleet manager first. Tell them what's going on in the situation you're in, and then they will in turn send you to safety. That's how we communicate with our fleet managers. Weather issues and communicating with your fleet managers is also important due to the fact if you have any weather delays, you're going into Pennsylvania and there's a storm, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, up in the Northeast, they're notorious for putting a restriction on commercial vehicles. You need to know that before you get there. Pick up the phone, you're a professional driver, Get a hold of your fleet manager and explain to them Pennsylvania has been shut down. There's no truck traffic allowed until the storm is over. I am, let's say, six or seven hours out from there. I'm going to stay where I'm at instead of continuing on because it's already hard enough to find parking up there. And it would definitely be a difficult thing to find parking when the state's been shut down for six or seven hours due to a winter storm. And that goes for Wyoming, too. You know, they have the wind events out there in Wyoming. The wind can get, you know, 80-plus miles an hour. And if you have a 5,000-pound load, that's not going to work. What you need to do is communicate to your fleet manager of the situation you're in and where you're at and when you shut down. Not at the end of the day, but when you get shut down and parked in a safe area, pick up the phone and call your fleet manager. The reason this is important is due to the fact that your fleet manager will put an email together and send that to our CSRs. And they, in turn, will get a hold of our customers and keep them advised of the situation, whether it be weather, high wind, accidents, traffic. All this stuff is what you need to communicate with your fleet manager and keep that line of communications open. So they can in turn let our CSRs know, and then the CSRs can get a hold of our customers and let them know. No one likes a surprise. Everything works a lot better when everybody's talking and communicating with each other, whether you're delayed due to traffic, weather, or you know mishap, accident, whatever the situation is. Make sure you're safe and always can communicate with your fleet manager. When you arrive at a shipper and you get there early or on time for your appointment to pick up a load and you go check in and the shipper says, hey, the load's not ready, it's not a drop and hook, we're sorry, whatever the reason is, first of all, don't take it out on the person you're dealing with. They're just relaying the message and it's not nothing personal and it's not to make you mad. Yes, it gets frustrating. We've all been there. That's when you go back get the person's name you're dealing with in the shipping office, get their name, take that information back to the truck, call and communicate with your fleet manager and explain to them, I am here, I'm on time, this is what's going on, 
the load's not ready, it's not a drop and hook, that lets the fleet manager know that they need to get busy and get with the CSRs to figure out what the problem is. And the CSRs will in turn get a hold of the customer, see if we can get this issue resolved. And sometimes it does get resolved in a timely fashion and sometimes it doesn't. That's the nature of the beast and the game we play out here. But what you don't want to do is yell at the person that's delivering the news. They're just the messenger. They're just telling you what they are told. It's nothing personal. It's not a vendetta against you. You got to communicate with the fleet manager and let them handle it. Follow your chain of command because everybody's a little link in this chain. And if you break that chain because you're mad that the load's not ready, then you're probably going to wait longer than if you went the proper way with the fleet manager and getting a hold of them and letting them get a hold of the CSRs and the CSRs getting a hold of the customer. Same thing at the receiving side. If you get to a receiver and you're on time and you're not running late and you're early and you get backed in and they tell you, well, sorry, we can't unload you. It's going to take a couple extra hours or it's going to take, you know, half a day or 12 hours. I've been there myself, waited 12 hours for loads and numbers numerous times. You got to get a hold of your fleet manager. Realize it's nothing against you. It's nothing personal. Communicate the problems with your fleet manager so they can get a hold of the CSRs. The CSRs can get a hold of the customers and we can get this issue resolved. Following the chain of command might take a little bit of time. It's better than going in there and yelling and screaming at someone or not even letting anybody know what your issues are, what's going on out here on the road. The, as a professional driver here at Christensen, that's what you need to do. You're a professional. You need to act like a professional. You need to communicate your issues, whether they're good or bad. Pick up the phone and call your fleet manager and advise them of what's going on so they can handle everything the proper way. Especially at the shipper and receiver, if you are delayed, you need to get the person's name that you're talking to or interacting with and keep track of your times. And then if there's any compensation or detention time due to you, the fleet manager has all that and you can communicate that with the fleet manager when you get done doing what you're doing. And that way, come Friday when it's not on your check, because you didn't communicate and let anybody know, that's your responsibility. That's not your fleet manager's responsibility because he or she cannot read your mind. They don't know what's going on out here unless you actually talk to them. If you have any questions on any of the other videos I've done, and yes, I'm still going to do my winter driving tips, get a hold of your fleet manager and feel free to reach out to me. And once again, my name is Frank and I'm with Christensen Transportation. And you all be safe and have a wonderful day. Thank you.